ITU Telecom World 2016 in Bangkok. With me here today is Mr. Francois Ronsi, Director of ITU Radio Communication Bureau. So let me dig directly into the questions. So to my first question, Director of the ITU Telecommunication Bureau, uh, Mr. Brahim Asanou, has pointed out that more than half of all people uh, are not yet using the internet. And large differences in terms of broadband speeds and quality exist. Why is this happening? And is there any ideal way forward? Well, there are several reasons why this is happening. Uh, the first one, of course, is the availability of access to internet. To have this availability means to make investments and in particular in areas where these investments may be high and with not very bright prospect of being recovered quickly. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the first, let's say it's economical. Um, the other aspect is that even in the areas where you have this success, um, uh, not everybody is taking up internet for several reasons. One is also economical because it's not affordable. And, and the second one is um, uh, what is called um, digital literacy. So the, the digital literacy is not high enough for people to go into this world which is new for them. So th these are the reasons. As, as you can see, um, several of them are, are from an economical nature. And um, what is required to change that um, is, is, I think, to change the way in which traditionally um, the uh, licenses to operators have been given. Um, for broadband, uh, as, as it was already for, for mobile telephony, um, the main way has been through auctioning of spectrum, and, and, and that has been the, the main point. Um, this has um, an, an inherent difficulty is that it is taking out a lot of money from the possibilities of investment, including in these areas where, where they would be needed to uh, bridge the, this gap. Um, so if you want to get to more affordability, you also need, in addition to changing the, the way uh, the licenses are given, uh, you need to use a spectrum which is most fitted to cover large areas with lower population densities than in big cities. Okay. So uh, I think um, one of the impediment for reaching uh, as many people as possible since 3G started its development about 15 years ago, one of the impediment is that the uh, frequencies available, the spectrum available for this, has been in higher bands. Historically, the second generation was developed in, in the band below one gigahertz, and the third generation was developed in the band of the two gigahertz band. Okay. Uh, when you go to one, from one to two gigahertz, you actually uh, multiply the number of base station required by four, not by two, by four, to provide the same coverage. So this also has been um, a technical be reasons behind, uh, behind the scene, if you wish, that for, for which um, the, we still have four billion people to reach uh, for internet access. Why do you believe wireless broadband can solve the problem? Well, I think wireless broadband has the ambition especially through the next generation 5G, as the ambition of uh, providing uh, internet access to everybody everywhere. Uh, that, that's very clear. So um, 
again, the, the question is how we can do that. Obviously, fiber optic networks are not going to be available to everybody everywhere. There is a, an economical limit, again, to what you can do. Um, but but you, you, I don't think uh, you could say that wireless broadband is just to complement the fixed network uh, for the last mile. It is actually, it has a much broader ambition because uh, with the um, mobile telephony revolution that we have seen in the last 20 years, people are now used to have means of communication with them at any time. And the same thing is happening for broadband communications. Broadband communication become mobile. From a technical perspective, what are the major advantages with wireless broadband? The major advantage is that uh, it is a seamless connectivity that you, you have. You, you are able to uh, communicate with anybody anywhere in the world, and wherever you are at any time. Uh, if, if I go back in the past where we didn't have that, just to reach somebody on the telephone would easily take one week because you would, you would call, you would not be there. Okay. And um, then he would call you, you would not be there. So th this is the, the type of things that you can, uh, you can very easily uh, remedy it with mobile uh, telephony and mobile broadband. Everything can, you, you can be operational at any time. Not everybody may like this, but this is what is happening. What benefits could wireless broadband bring to operators? The benefit is that this is what people want. Mm. So either you, you provide that to people or you would not survive, mm. I think is the, the issue now. But let me go back to what I started to say, uh, to an answer your first question, which is actually very broad, and which means how can we deliver broadband to everybody? Um, uh, I mentioned the need to change the way spectrum is, is allocated uh, or is, is uh, actually uh, given to operators to provide service. Uh, we have been uh, seeing in, in the recent years um, new uh, ways of, of doing this uh, appearing in several countries. And I, I, I would just like to mention one of them, which is what is happening today in Rwanda. Uh, two years ago, uh, Rwanda launched um, the deployment of 4G, uh, but they didn't do auctions. They, they did uh, a contest by which the state would partnership, would be in a partnership with the private company, and the private company would deploy the network and make the investment, and the state would actually invest by giving spectrum for this. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and, and the selection criteria was on providing coverage to practically all the population in three years, and at an affordable price. And we are actually, this is going to, this is happening. And uh, the expectation is that uh, in one year from now, 95% of the population of Rwanda will have access to 4G, which is broadband uh, wireless. So uh, I think we'll see more and more of, of this type of approach, which actually maximizes from the outset the public benefit of spectrum and by providing the entire population, or most, most of it, um, with, with broadband services at an affordable prices. So basically, the criterion now will no longer be to maximize the profit for the state, but to maximize the profit for the population by having affordable prices and ubiquitous coverage. These are the two elements, because if as, as I mentioned before, 
the two reasons why we, we are not covering all the population in the world is the economic reason for the investment to be made and the economic reason, reason for the affordability. And so I think this type of approach uh, actually encompasses or gives a response to both these problems. Another important element of providing affordable uh, broadband mobile communications is the use of the lower part of the spectrum. New frequency bands uh, under one gigahertz have been made available uh, by the ITU since 2007, and they start now to be uh, used. This is the case in particular for Rwanda uh, at 700 megahertz. And this band provides uh, the ability to deploy a network with a much lower number of base stations and therefore at a much affordable cost. What role does ITU play in improving network connectivity for the billions of unconnected worldwide? And the ITU is, is the uh, only organization um, which allocate spectrum to the different services worldwide. So the first role of ITU and the first reason um, why uh, it, it is helping uh, the development of broadband is that it makes spectrum available mm. worldwide. And by uh, selecting frequency bands, which uh, all countries in the world agree uh, to allocate for this purpose. So in, in the past World Radio Conference of the ITU, where this process takes place, um, several uh, frequency bands have been identified and allocated for uh, broadband mobile. This was the case a long time ago for 3G. We don't realize that the, the 3G uh, decisions at worldwide level were taken in the ITU in 1992, at the time where the second generation was only starting. Uh, so this was basically 10 years forward vision. And then similarly, the decision for 4G bands were taken in 2000 uh, and 2007, so a long time ago already. Um, so that's the first aspect of the activities of the ITU, providing harmonized spectrum uh, so that if you have um, a telephone, or now a smartphone, a tablet, or a computer, uh, you can go from one country to another, connect to the network, and it's going to work. Okay. It's going to work for two reasons. One, because you have the right frequencies. They are the same in every country. The second reason is that you have the right standard. And the standard is also developed by the ITU through uh, a process by which we ensure that uh, we'll have the uh, equipment uh, available in every country for this purpose so that we have economies of scale and this addresses um, the other aspect which is affordability um, by providing uh, harmonized standards which are applied everywhere uh, the ITU enables affordable prices for broadband. So these are the two aspects. The third aspect, is once we have adopted harmonized allocations, harmonized standards, is to actually make sure that all countries apply these allocations and these standards. And this is also the role of ITU, in particular uh, under Mr. Sanu's um, Telecommunication Development Bureau. Thank you, Mr. Francois Rancy. Thank, Thank you. you.